How's it going? So in this video we're going to try to tackle uh, launching a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 uh, instance uh, on AWS. Uh, we're going to do this um, from scratch. There's nothing, it's not, it's not really too difficult. Um, and then once we have that launched, the overall goal is to deploy GitLab 8.x so in this case, 8.16.4. Uh, we're going to deploy it to that RHEL 7 uh, T2 medium uh, using an RPM. And we're going to use a wget command to retrieve that RPM. All right, so let's get started here. So I can get my window over. So this is fairly unscripted. So as we encounter any errors or gotchas, I'm trying to resolve them while recording. So maybe if you bump into the same error, same gotcha, this will help you resolve it as well. Okay, so first thing we're going to go ahead and create our instance. Uh, Rel.7. And I apologize if it looks like it's scrolling a little slowly, but I'm uh, remote accessing a uh, MacBook right now. This video is actually being created on a Windows desktop. Let's see if I can find. Yep, here we go. So, just to quickly capture what I'm doing here, uh, I'm searching underneath Choose an AMI. Uh, I search for Red Hat 7. Uh, nothing's going to pop up in Quick Start or My AMIs unless you already have your own AMIs. Uh, in this case, I just clicked on AWS Marketplace. Uh, let me scroll down. You should find one that's free tier eligible, which is what we're shooting for. So Red Hat Enterprise Linux RHEL 7, and it should be free tier eligible. So we're going to be doing a T2 medium, uh, but we're not going to have this up nearly long enough to really incur any kind of serious charges. Uh, so if you're following along in this video, uh, by the time we're finished with the video and wrapped up, you know, we're talking about less than a dollar, more than likely. Okay, so we're going to do a T2 medium, and the reason why we're going to do a T2 medium for the RHEL 7 instance is because GitLab runs best on two cores with at least two gigs of RAM, so T2 medium should be more than enough. It gives us two cores and four gigs of RAM. So select T2 medium, and then let's click on review and launch. And real quick, we're going to go to our security groups and edit that. And because this is just for demo purposes and for learning, we're not actually setting anything up for production. We're going to add a rule for all traffic, which is something that we normally would not do. But like I said, for demo and learning purposes, uh, this shouldn't hurt anything. And we're going to set these all from anywhere as well. So real quick, so under your type SSH, HTTP, add a rule uh, for all traffic. Uh, it will set the port ranges for you. And then under source, go ahead and select anywhere. And this is just to make it a little bit easier for us uh, with opening ports and dealing with public DNS and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, this isn't a production GitLab instance. So we're not too worried about security at the moment. Okay, so once you have that set up, go ahead and click Review and Launch. And everything looks good with our security groups. We've selected our T2 medium. Let's go ahead and launch. All right, so we're going to choose an existing key pair. Uh, you may need to actually create a new key pair, as you see right here, depending on whether you're, you know, already have a key created. 
Uh, we're not going to cover creating a key on AWS in this video, so it may be something else that you need to Google or uh, learn prior to following the rest of this video. But in this case, we're going to choose an existing key pair, and you may need to create a new key pair. So let me go ahead and confirm that's the actual key I want to use. Yes, it is. Okay. All right, we acknowledge that we have the selected private key, and we're going to go ahead and launch the instance. So this usually takes a little bit. Uh, if you scroll down, you can click on View Instances, which will allow you to see your instance spinning up. And we're going to go ahead and name this real quick, just for demo purposes. So, uh, GitLab Demo should be fine. So that's initializing right now. Um, it's, it should be fully up here momentarily. All right, yeah, so it looks like it's good. So we can go ahead and try to connect to it now. So we're gonna select GitLab demo, click connect. This gives us an example of the SSH command we're gonna have to run with the uh, key pen or that you should have selected or created in the previous step. So we'll go ahead and select that copy it. And then go ahead and bring up our terminal. And then we're just going to paste that in here. So I want to stop right here real quick and explain that if you created a new key for this, uh, you're going to have to set the permissions for that key. So like it it explains that when you click on connect. Let's just cover that real quick. So if you created a brand new key, it says your key must not be publicly viewable for SSH to work. So you'll need to actually run this command right here uh, to set the permissions for your key file. Just a side note there. All right, terminal. All right, so you're gonna go ahead and paste that SSH command in there. Go ahead and run it. Going to confirm that we yes we want to continue connecting and now we're connected to our t2 medium uh, rel 7 instance so do a quick there's nothing here which is as expected we're in home ec2 user all looks good all right so depending on the environment where you're standing this up um, it's usually, almost always, in my opinion, a good idea to go ahead and do our uh, yum update. And I have some steps I laid out, so I'm going to go ahead and bring those up now for my own benefit. Uh, yes, so here's kind of a little bit of a, some side notes I left myself. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and do our sudo yum update. This will bring our box up to date. With all our packages, it will bring down any dependencies that need to be updated. It will remove some that have been deprecated. Uh, this is usually just like a uh, kind of a housekeeping thing that you should do after spinning up a new uh, rel instance. Yes, it's letting us know this is all the stuff that it's going to install or upgrade. <coughs> a total of 266 megs, and yes. So while this is finishing updating, um, this uh, particular RPM for GitLab. Okay, 
So now that our YAM upgrade <coughs> has completed, let's uh, see what we got for wgit. URL, great, that's what we expect. All right, so now that we have wget installed, we can go ahead and take our URL here and our command wget with our flag set for content disposition. And let's go ahead and run that. Downloading our RPM for GitLab 8.16.4. And we should be able to take a look now and see it. Yes. So we've brought in GitLab Community Edition 8.16.4 RPM. All right. So we've completed this step. Uh, we did this prior, the sudo yum update. So now it's time for sudo yum install of our package. So let's copy that. And I'll make sure I put these, these this little bit of these, this guide here, not really guide, but this list of instructions or notes, I guess, really. I'll make sure I put them in the comments as well to help out and feel free to ping me or send me any questions in the comments as well. Oh, so no package, nothing to do. if we need okay so I typed put a period there and then did R tab for autocomplete it picked up the RPM so let's see that if that helps sudo yum install get that yes okay so that's my bad so in that command we need to actually go ahead and edit that <coughs> we want to make sure that we're uh, giving the full command for sudo yum install gitlab community edition 8.16.4 and we want to make sure we're appending the dot rpm the file type package type that's in there all right so now that we got the command correct it's letting us know what we're installing it's letting us know how big it is one package so we're on 67 megs yes we want to install gitlab 8.16.4 community edition So once this finishes the install, and this can take a little while, uh, it's going to give us the information that we need to further config our GitLab installation if we wanted to, to take it beyond uh, the default setting. So for example, if we wanted to set up SSL certs, um, or if we wanted to change our URL from the default one that it's going to assign, which in this case is going to be the public DNS for the Amazon EC2 instance. But for this demo, we're not going to do that. All right, so thank you for installing GitLab. To configure and start GitLab, run the following command, sudo gitlab control reconfigure. All right, so before we actually run that command, we want to notice, pay attention to right here, that GitLab should be reachable at this uh, URL. And that's our public DNS that Amazon gave us. So let's copy that. And 
and browse over here real quick. Okay, so let's finish running the GitLab reconfig and see if we can reach it from that point. So like it's saying here, uh, otherwise configure GitLab for your system by editing the GitLab RB file. But we're not doing that in this demo. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our sudo GitLab control configure. And this essentially is going to look at the gitlab.rb file, which is located under Etsy slash GitLab. And because we're not editing that file, we're using all the default settings, it's going to, our GitLab instance will be reachable at the uh, EC2 public DNS. We're not really changing anything. We're just telling it to, okay, default settings are fine. Go ahead and reconfigure. So it's gonna kick off Chef and it's gonna use everything inside of that RPM to go ahead and install and further configure GitLab. And this can take anywhere from, I don't know, a minute to five minutes, depending on your system. Something that's important to point out, and it's already scrolled up the uh, terminal window, but the very first time you reach your instance of GitLab after it's been installed, your username is going to be root and the password is going to be uh, whatever you configure it to be. It's going to prompt you for a new password, but something important to remember is that the username you're going to use is root. All right, so GitLab has been reconfigured. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Great, so now we have GitLab Community Edition up and it wants us to set a new password. If I could find the text box. So go ahead and set your password. And this is gonna be for the root user. Obviously we don't wanna save that. And username, root. Great, so now we're in GitLab. And after you get in now, you can set up your projects and your groups and you start inviting your members and that's pretty much all there is to it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them in the comments section below. Um, I'll also leave a public email that you guys can shoot questions to and appreciate you watching. And if you have any suggestions on future videos, uh, please post those as well. That's something I'm working on right now is a tutorial for setting up Selenium Grid and Node Hubs uh, through AWS. So hopefully that'll be something I can actually put together and uh, share with everyone. Thanks for watching.